Good afternoon YouTube, uh, welcome back to my channel again. Um, today I'm going to give you a quick video and I'm going to keep it kind of quick and short because it's absolutely freezing here today. I'm going to give you a quick video on how to change the door illumination bulbs on a GM F-Body, the, uh, the fourth gen, which is the, uh, the Trans Ams, uh, the Camaros and the Firebirds. Uh, it should be pretty similar for all models but I'm actually doing it on my 95 Camaro but I believe it should be the same for uh, 93 to around 2000 kind of uh, kind of range so I'm just gonna pick you guys up here and show you a couple of things a couple of things are first things you're gonna need are make sure you got yourself a cross point screwdriver get a couple of flat blades as well because you're gonna need those a pair of tweezers as well because you know when something drops down there you can get it and if you can't get it without make sure you get yourself one of these little extendy magnets on a stick these things are really handy to have around. So the first thing that you've got is you've got a screw there just inside your door handle. You've got another one around here underneath the actual switch panel itself there. That's another cross point there. And the bulb that we're actually going in to change, I don't know if you can see it up there, it's actually hidden way up in there. And you don't have to take the whole door panel off, all you got to do is actually just take this panel off here. So, let me get you guys set up over here. And bring you in a little bit closer there. Hopefully the light gets about right. Okay, there we go. So, first thing you want to do, get that screw out of the centre panel there. Like I say, this is one of those jobs that I knew it needed doing back in June, but for some reason, doing it in the middle of February, when it's about minus 10 or minus 5, I believe it is today, seemed a particularly good idea. I'm get you guys a little further out there, get a little out of the way. Okay, now this is where you're going to want your tweezers as well, and maybe a little magnet on the stick. You've got to prise that away from there, and also you're going to need a little tube, a little tiny tube of where I put it. One second. Yeah, mind that. Get yourself a little tube of super glue, okay? Now this has got to be the real cheap pound shop, dollar store, rock bottom stuff, okay? I'll explain why in a bit. But you get yourself a little screwdriver in here. Now you've got your little magnetic retaining clips on the inside of here. Sorry, not magnetic, metal retaining clips. They'll always drop away. Now for some reason my car also only has one of these and I don't know why. It's obviously got lost somewhere in the previous part of its life. Get yourself a little screwdriver in there. Be real careful when you're poking your screwdriver in here to gently ease those contacts away. Because I mean, my car's 20, 25 years old now, and I can pretty much guarantee, living in the UK, if I want another one of these plugs, I'm not going to get one of these that easy. Also, try not to short across these either. Might upset the car, car locking, who knows. Might fizz out the ECU. I was just trying to be careful with anything where you've got anything like these involved. You, know, you bridge across those two terminals or something and it doesn't like it. Who knows what kind of problems you're into. Okay, so now we've got the screw out of there and out of the centre. Just gonna get in anywhere that you can. I usually bring it in around here like that. Pull this front section away. And then what that does, as you can see, that releases this whole clip area around here. Now don't worry too much about the actual sliding locking thing at the moment, because what that'll do you push that into the locking position as if the door's locked and that'll allow it he says that'll allow it to actually come out a little bit more okay and that there let me just grab a hold of you guys again so you can get the camera down in here that'll actually get you as much movement as you need so you can get the camera right in there okay and as you can see there, it's just twist, 
and there's your little ball okay no need to take off any of this locking mechanism you don't even need to take it from around where the door handle fits okay so all I'm going to do I'm going to go and find myself a replacement bulb I'll be right back okay so I'm back with my replacement bulbs here always make sure you've got plenty of these things too because they're only cheap chances are out of a pack of ten you're going to get like at least three or four that don't work so next thing to do turn your lights on as well okay okay so I've got the lights on and get in here I assume that's showing up on the camera as you can see no go so pop that one out throw it away as before with all these little LED bulbs any of these little like pin replacement bulbs that you get bend those terminals out a little bit okay it's gonna give you better contact remember try it one way if it doesn't work one way you gotta flip it over try it the other way make sure that you get in there that's it make sure that you get in there get a good contact with it if you can wriggle it like this and it flickers that's just going to do the same when you put it back together okay so now we know that I'm going to make sure that those terminals are pushed in tightly in the bottom okay where the wires actually go in there sometimes what happens over the years they kind of vibrate loose a little okay so you push that in like that give it a wriggle around still got a little bit of a flicker on there so I'm going to turn my lights off because it's annoying me okay I've still got a bit of a flicker on that bulb there okay so I'm going to bend these terminals out again a little more now <sighs> if only it wasn't minus 10 I'm going to get myself a little terminal screwdriver now okay one of these here little Little terminal screwdrivers. I'm just going to bring you guys a little further out. What I'm going to do is now, I'm going to go actually inside here. Now make sure you do this with the lights off as well. Okay, you do this with the lights on, you're into blowing fuses and a whole load more hassle. Okay. Now while you're in here, just get around the inside. I'm going to bring you guys over in a second and show you what I've done. Get yourself in there, and what you're actually doing is you're actually bending the terminals inwards, okay? I don't know if we're going to get to focus on here. You see right down in there, okay? You see the little shiny silver bit? That's obviously your terminal. So what you're doing with a little screwdriver is you're getting right inside there, okay? What you're going to do is... You if your terminals start off like that, you've got to pinch them so they're like that. Okay, it's only a little bit, but it's enough, and it gets it much, much better contact on that bulb. I'm going to mount you guys back up here on the old tripod again. Okay, so like I said, all I'm doing is I'm just squeezing them terminals a little bit. Don't squeeze them too much because otherwise you won't be able to get the bulb in either. And we all know what a pain in the arse that kind of thing is. You, know, you try and ram it in and then it just goes wrong and then it bends everything. So you get your lights back on now. Okay, got your lights back on. Make sure you got your bulb, little pins bent outwards again for good contact. Before you push all the way in, push it in and drop it. Push it in. Good old gravity, never let you down. Push it in. Remember, if it doesn't work one way, flip it over. Try it the other way, okay? Now, as you can see now, no flickering, no matter what I do with it, no flickering, no nothing. Okay? That way, what you're getting is you're getting good contact all around on the bulb. Okay, and then it's just a case of I'm not going to be able to get the camera in here to show you because the gap is just too small. See if we can spin you guys around a little here. 
So we can get at it from the other side. Do, do, do. And I think again. There we go. There's a little recess that it sits up in just there. Okay, push it in, twist. That's in. That bulb is going nowhere. And as you can imagine, the rebuild is the exact opposite of the breakdown. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do now, don't worry about any of this here. Main thing is make sure you've got these plugs still accessible. Nothing worse than putting it all back together, realising you've got a plug missing. So you do, get that up in there, pull that upwards, and give that a good shove in there like that. Make sure you push up from the bottom of the handle too, okay? There's a clip down there that you don't want leaving out. You leave that out, the whole thing won't fit properly. Doesn't matter which order you put these screws back in, but I always tend to put the bottom one back in first. It seems to do a little better job. Then you get that back in there. Get the other screw back in the door panel here. Okay, that's in there. Handle's still loose. Door lock still slides backwards and forwards. No problem. Get your door switches back on. Make sure you pull yourself a bit of wire through. But don't stress the wires, okay? Put that one on. Check it works. Locking still working. Push that one in as well. Give it a good push. Make sure it's nice and firm. In. Make sure it's nice and firm up against there as well, okay? What I'm going to do, if I can find my keys here on the roof. Just make sure this window still works properly as it should. Okay. Then look, try it from the driver's side too, okay? It still works. Sometimes you know you mess around with wires and things, it can disturb stuff. Okay, so this is where your cheap pound shop slash dollar store super glue comes in. It's got to be cheap, okay? The reason why, if you use expensive stuff, it's real good quality, okay? You use the good quality stuff, it will never ever break away. Use the poor quality, cheapo stuff like this. This is going to, it'll do the job. It'll hold it steady so it doesn't get on your nerves and kind of slosh around in there while you're pressing buttons. But if you need to break it away again, all you're going to need is a little bit of a screwdriver in there just to pop. Okay? And as you can see, you can just about see a little bit of leftover residue from the cheapo glue before, where I glued this in before. It just stops them kind of sitting in place and sloshing around like this. Okay? Just another one of those things that, you know, when it was built in the 90s it was great. Sometimes now you want a little bit, a little bit less of a rattle, a little bit less of a squeak. I'm going to line you guys up there. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to get my little cheapo super glue and just put a little bit around the top and around this corner here, okay? This also helps if after time your clips have gone weak. Being 20, 25 years old, a lot of the clips and things are a little weak on this car. Okay, doesn't matter about the amount that you use. If you, use, if you think you're using too much, you're probably using the right amount. As I say, this is just real cheapo stuff. And you push it in, push that clip underneath there. Okay, and press. And just hold it there for a minute. Let the glue do its job. I'll bring you guys back away from here a little. I'll just set you up over there. See if you can see me here. Okay. So as you can see there, that makes it nice and pretty simple. Yeah. I'm just going to keep my hand on this glue for another minute. But um, yeah. That's a pretty easy way. And as you can see, it's taken me probably 10, 12 minutes somewhere around there. But uh, hopefully that's some help someone. Um, if you've got any other questions or anything, um, drop some comments down below. I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe as well. Um, yeah, I will catch you guys next time.